Okie dokie. So how many years of history are we getting? So, welcome to International Talk Like a Pirate Day. You have been forgetting that, haven't you? Hurricanes it is. in Puerto Rico and Hurricanes pirates. in Puerto Rico and pirates in Pinkney, Michigan. Oh, yeah, the Pinkney The Pinkney Pirates. <laughs> That's the high school ball team. <laughs> okay. Every year on International Talk Like a Pirate Day, we forget that it is, except my son-in-law always posts it on Facebook. Oh, that's nice. Arr! We will not do the entire devotion this way. Please. <laughs> Please, okay. <laughs> I surprised you there, didn't I? You surprised me. Yes. We're going to begin with a good pirate song. Fight the good fight. <laughs> And I'm not sure if I sound like a pirate or like the penguin from Batman. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he had his mouth off on a side like that too because of the cigar thing. No <laughs> comment. <laughs> oh, half our audience is too young to remember the penguin on Batman. <laughs> fight the Good Fight is number 664. Let's see. Fight the good fight with all your might. Christ is your strength and Christ your right. Lay hold on life and it shall be your joy and crown eternally. Run the straight race through God's good grace. Lift up your eyes and seek his face. Life with its way before us lies. Christ is the path and Christ the prize. Cast care aside, lean on your guide. His boundless mercy will provide. Trust and enduring faith shall prove. Christ is your life and Christ your love. Faint not nor fear, his arms are near. He changes not who holds you dear. Only believe and you will see that Christ is all eternally. Second Kings 15. We're going to go through um, several kings. Yes, this is a lengthy reading. We will switch back and forth, but we're going through one, two, three, four, five, six, seven kings. See if you can add up how many years. That's I was all of a sudden interested. <laughs> okay. In the 27th year of Jeroboam, king of Israel, Azariah, the son of Amaziah, king of Judah, began to reign. He was 16 years old when he began to reign, and he reigned 52 years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Jecoliah of Jerusalem, and he did what was right in the eyes of the Lord, according to all that his father Amaziah had done. Nevertheless, the high places were not taken away. The people still sacrificed and made offerings on the high places. And the Lord touched the king so that he was a leper to the day of his death, and he lived in a separate house. And Jotham the king's son was over the household, governing the people of the land. Now the rest of the acts of Azariah and all that he did, are they not written in the book of the Chronicles of the kings of Judah? And Azariah slept with his fathers, and they buried him with his fathers in the city of David. And Jotham his son reigned in his place. In the 38th year of Azariah, king of Judah, Zechariah, the son of Jeroboam, reigned over Israel in Samaria six months. And he did what was evil in the sight of the Lord, as his fathers had done. He did not depart from the sins of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, which he made Israel to sin. Shalom, the son of Jabesh, conspired against him and struck him down at Ibleam and put him to death and reigned in his place. Now the rest of the deeds of Zechariah, behold, they are written in the book of the Chronicles of the kings of Israel. This was the promise of the Lord that he gave to Jehu. Your son shall sit on the throne of Israel to the fourth generation. And so it came to pass. 
Shalom, the son of Jabesh, began to reign in the 39th year of Uzziah, king of Judah. And he reigned one month one in month. Samaria. The, there's a bit of a switch up here. So he began to reign in the 39th year of Uzziah. Where did Uzziah come from? That's the beginning of the chapter. That's the same as Azariah. Uh, we've had some name switch ups Joash and Jehoash and Joram and Jehoram. Uh, Uzziah is another name for Azariah. So we're still in the 52 years, and yeah. this guy reigned one month. Yeah. Then Menahem, the son Menahem. of Menahem, son. the son of Gadi, came up from Tirzah and came to Samaria, and he struck down Shalom, the son of Jabesh, in Samaria, and put him to death and reigned in his place. Now the rest of the deeds of Shalom and the conspiracy that he made, behold, they are written in the book of the Chronicles of the Kings of Israel. At that time, Menachem sacked Tifsa and all who were in it and its territory from Tirzah on because they did not open it to him. Therefore, he sacked it and he ripped open all the women in it who were pregnant. So the first guy reigned six months. The next guy reigned one month. In the 39th year of Azariah, king of Judah. Now, now they say Azariah. I don't understand why he goes back and forth between Uzziah and Azariah. Keep us on our toes. In the 39th year of Azariah, king of Judah, Menachem, the son of Gadi, began to reign over Israel, and he reigned ten years in Samaria. And he did what was evil in the sight of the Lord. He did not depart all his days from the sins of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, which he made Israel to sin. Pul, the king of Assyria, came against the land, and Menachem gave Pul a thousand talents of silver, that he might help him to confirm his hold on the royal power. Menachem exacted the money from Israel, that is, from all the wealthy men, fifty shekels of silver from every man, to give to the king of Assyria. So the king of Assyria turned back and did not stay there in the land. Now the rest of the deeds of Menachem and all that he did, are they not written in the book of the Chronicles of the kings of Israel? Menachem slept with his fathers, and Pekahiah his son reigned in his place. In the fiftieth year of Azariah king of Judah, Pekahiah the son of Menachem began to reign over Israel in Samaria, and he reigned two years. And he did what was evil in the sight of the Lord. He did not turn away from the sins of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, which he made Israel to sin. And Pekah, the son of Remaliah, his captain, conspired against him with fifty men of the people of Gilead and struck him down in Samaria, in the citadel of the king's house, with Argob and Are. He put him to death and reigned in his place. Now the rest of the deeds of Pekahiah and all that he did, behold, they are written in the book of the Chronicles of the kings of Israel. In the 52nd year of Azariah, king of Judah, Pekah, Pekah, the son of Remaliah, began to reign over Israel in Samaria, and he reigned 20 years. And he did what was evil in the sight of the Lord. He did not depart from the sins of Jeroboam, the son of, Nebat, the son of Nebat, which he made Israel to sin. In the days of Pekah, king of Israel, Tiglath-Pileser, king of Assyria, came and captured Aijan, abel Beit maacha Janoa, Kadesh, Hatzor, Gilead, and Galilee, all the land of the Naphtali, and he carried the people captive to Assyria. Then Hoshea, the son of Elah, made a conspiracy against Pekah, the son of Remaliah, and struck him down and put him to death and reigned in his place in the twentieth year of Jotham, the son of Uzziah. Now the rest of the acts of Pekah and all that he did, behold, they are written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Israel. In the second year of Pekah, the son of Remaliah, the king of Israel, Jotham, the son of Uzziah, king of Judah, began to reign. He was 25 years old when he began to reign, and he reigned 16 years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Jerusha, the daughter of Zadok. And he did what was right in the eyes of the Lord, according to all that his father Uzziah had done. Nevertheless, the high places were not removed. The people still sacrificed and made offerings on the high places. He built the upper gate of the house of the Lord. Now the rest of the acts of Jotham and all that he did, are they not written in the book of the Chronicles of the kings of Judah? In those days the, king, the Lord began to send Rezin, the king of Syria, and Pekah, the son of Ramaleah, against Judah. Jotham slept with his fathers and was buried with his fathers in the city of David his father, and Ahaz his son 
framed in his place. So sixteen. I think it's very appropriate that today's international talk like a pirate day. We have all these kings killing each other. Sixty. Do you counted them all up? You added them all up. Fifty-two plus sixteen. Oh well, there you go. But I can't sixty-eight. <laughs> I finally got it. <laughs> so we started with the king of Judah and we ended with the king of Judah. Azariah and his son uh, Jotham. Jotham. And and actually Jotham was helping his dad early on because his father had leprosy and right, was right. kind of isolated. And so Jotham was the one out front doing things and, and dad was in the back room. And um, But then in between those two kings of Judah, we have five kings of Israel. And this guy gets assassinated and then the next guy gets assassinated and... and uh, they they uh, were being attacked by by the Assyrians, not the Syrians, Hazael and so on from Damascus, but Assyria, and the capital of that nation is Nineveh. Another sea story, by oh, golly! No. <laughs> because of course you remember which prophet went to Nineveh. That was Jonah, and. Uh, he went aboard a pirate ship and they threw him overboard. Never went. But uh, we sail a ship with an army. <laughs> there you go. Um, yeah. So the the uh, the Israelites in the north are being attacked now by a new nation that has risen up and overpowered Syria, and us Syria has incorporated that whole territory, and they are attacking downwards. And and the kings of Israel are paying money. To try to keep them away, um, but at one point there, it said that he, that the king of Assyria, uh, Tiglath Pileser, came and carried off captive all the people of Galilee, Naphtali, the, the whole region of the north uh, around the Sea of Galilee, um, and. That will set the scene for many other changes that we'll see as we move towards the New Testament. So, so let's start back at the beginning of the chapter. Azariah is Uzziah. If we jump over to the prophet Isaiah, he begins his prophecy, the vision of Isaiah, the son of Amos, which he saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. So Isaiah was teaching or preaching to the southern kingdom, Judah and Jerusalem. In the days of Uzziah, Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah, kings of Judah. So Isaiah the prophet is not mentioned in 1 Kings, but all the things that are going on with Isaiah, which we're more familiar with than we are with 1 Kings, because we have Isaiah texts uh, talking about the coming Savior and, and talking about the punishment of Jerusalem, what's going to happen to, to uh, Judah. Um, he's doing all those things beginning now, beginning in chapter 15 with the reign of King Azariah, Azariah or Uzziah, uh, and continuing with Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah. So when we get to reading Isaiah, then you will see uh, his point of view on what's happening in Jerusalem. Uh, Hear, O heavens, and give ear, O earth, for the Lord has spoken. Children have I reared up and brought up, but they have rebelled against me. The ox knows its owner, and the donkey its master's crib, but Israel does not know. My people do not understand. Ah, sinful nation, a people laden with iniquity, offspring of evildoers, children who deal corruptly, they have forsaken the Lord. They have despised the Holy One of Israel. They are utterly estranged. So we're getting the these little snippets about the royalty. And it happens that Uzziah is a leper, blah, blah, blah. Who, who, who overcomes who? How many years they rule? Isaiah tells us uh, when it says that uh, he did good things, but the high places weren't removed. And the people were still offering sacrifices there. Isaiah is telling us this is what's going on among the people. They are worshiping this, that, and the other thing. Uh, they are unfaithful to God, and they're acting unjustly. 
and he is very upset about it. And so uh, we come to this famous passage, Isaiah chapter 6. In the year that King Uzziah died, when is that? That's 52 years after he began to reign. Isaiah, wow. It doesn't say that he began at the beginning of Uzziah's reign. It's the beginning of Jotham's, actually. Well, that's when chapter 6 takes place. So sometime during King Uzziah's reign, uh, oh, Isaiah okay. started. started. Um, but he's going to be a pastor prophet for quite a while. Um, and, and what does he say? In the year that King Uzziah died, and Jotham takes over, I saw the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and the train of his robe filled the temple. And above him stood two seraphim. And we have this image that we have in one of our hymns. Could have sung that too. Uh, of the temple being filled with, with the presence of God. And there's this promise, uh, you know, that God uh, is there with them, and he's going to send Isaiah, but he says, what is he supposed to say to the people? Go and say to them, keep on hearing, but do not understand. Keep on seeing, but do not perceive. Make the heart of this people dull and their ears heavy and blind their eyes, lest they see with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their hearts and turn and be healed. And then I said, How long, O Lord? He said, Until cities lie waste without inhabitant, and houses without people, and the land is a desolate waste. That's what all is coming up. But he says, There will be a stump that remains, and there will be a shoot from that stump, and the people will be restored. We, we in, in Second Kings, are being prepared as we see the, you know, the faults and failings of the royalty uh, and how kingdoms rise and fall, quite literally. But God is working a spiritual battle with these people. It's not just it is not just politics. And we in our news all we see is the politics. Here's a good here's a good way to think of it. When you turn on Fox or CNN, you are like watching First Kings, except they don't make any comments about who's faithful and unfaithful. But you are seeing royalty did this, royalty did that, the elites of the country did this, the rich people did that. But when we read God's word, we can discern what the hearts of the people are doing. How, whether our, our nation is faithful or unfaithful in the spiritual battle. As we look about us, we see... Uh, by the guiding of the Holy Spirit, that God is still battling uh, against the, the forces of the powers and principalities of, of darkness, or of the, of the air. I can't remember how it's put in First Peter. And, and uh, we are a part of that great struggle. And yet, throughout Isaiah and Jeremiah and Jonah and Amos, there is always this promise. We'll win. God will overcome. And all the evil we see around us and all the ups and downs of kingdoms and nations, it all ends with one nation and one kingdom. That is the one that we pray about all the time. Thy kingdom come. God is doing his thing. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you for faithful rulers, for people that have striven to serve you well in political spheres, but Lord, there aren't many. And they're pushed this way and that, and they cannot be perfect. None of these men, uh, they, they tried to walk in the way of David, but yet they did not. David himself, of course, was corrupted and all his descendants. But you, Lord, you are our king. You are the one who will rule forever and ever, and we trust our lives into your hands. You will make all these things turn out, not just for good, but for the best. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you
peace. Amen.